Okay, now we're going to focus on the guy lussac law, which is uh, constant volume. So we're going to show that the ratio of pressure to temperature is constant in a gas that is held at constant volume. So I have a pressure gauge bowl here. There's some amount of uh, air here. And then over here, you can see the PSI reading, the pounds per square inch. And at the same time, you could also read uh, the uh, bars, uh, number of the, in terms of atmospheres. So I'm going to read the pounds per square inch and do my best because it's not a digital dial. Uh, it's about 14.7 right here because uh, uh, atmospheric pressure at sea level or close to sea level is 14.7. So right now, the pressure, the temperature reading right now just in the air, okay, okay, that's here is 21.6 Celsius. Now, what I want to show you, what I want to show you, in, uh, important thing here, when you're doing these ratios, that this law has to be done in Kelvin. You cannot do the ratios in Celsius. So if I put my uh, uh, thermometer in the water, I have room temperature water here, 20.3 Celsius. You can see 20.2 or 20.3, okay? That'll be my T2. So what should the pressure be if I put the bowl in the room temperature water? If you look here, it goes slightly to the left. The pressure drops a little bit, okay? So let's read this here. It looks like about uh, 14 and a half. 14 and a half. So, okay, so that'll be, uh, we can call that P2, P2 experiment, 14 and a half PSI, and then the temperature was 20.3, but then I have to add 273.15, okay, because uh, I need to change it to Kelvin, right? 293.45 Kelvin. What's my T1 in Kelvin? I have to add uh, 273 and 273.15 uh, to this, so I get 574.294. The uh, ratio of 14.7 divided by 294.75 times this one cross multiplies over there. 14.6, so P2 is gonna be 14.6. So it's pretty close to my reading that I got 14.5, so the pressure dropped, okay? What if I put the bowl now in the hot water, okay? You could tell this one was very obvious. The pressure all of a sudden went up and the temperature reading I'm getting here, I put the thermometer in there. I have close to boiling water, 95.2 Celsius. 95.2. Okay, and then my pressure reading here is 16, 17, 18, 18.3, something like that. Okay, 18.3. So that one was very obviously went up, right? And then the now, according to the theory, T2 over, now imagine if we hadn't changed it to Kelvin, okay, and we got 95, uh, and then P1 was 14.7 over, if we had kept it at 21.6, we would have gotten what? 14.7 uh, divided by 21.6 times 95, it would tell us that the pressure is 64.7 psi, that the pressure inside of the ball should be all the way up to 64, 65, which is way, way too high, okay? We got 18.2. So our P2 experimental was 18.2 psi. 
So the reason that the Celsius doesn't work is, is that it's not a true scientific measure of uh, temperature. Okay? It's an arbitrary measure where zero Celsius refers to the freezing point of water. Okay? The true scientific measure of temperature is Kelvin. Okay, so again, we got to change this to Kelvin. 18.5 uh, 36 PSI, very close to my reading, because it's not really a digital scale, so I'm sort of uh, not reading it very accurately, but that's very, very good. So the pressure should go up to 18.3 versus the experimental 18.2, okay? What if I put it here in cold water? I have a bucket of ice water. Now the change is not as much because ice water is closer to regular room temperature water than boiling water is. So now it went down to uh, 14. It settled at about 14. Okay. And then the temperature is what? Could see here 4.0, oh, 4.1 Celsius. So let's say 4.0. Oh. Okay, you have to add 273 to that. So uh, 273 plus 4, uh, and then over here 294.75. Okay, 273.15 plus 4. So that'll be 277, right? 277. So now, what should the theoretical pressure be? 14.7 divided by 294.75 times 277.15. And then you can see here, T2 theoretical is 13.8 PSI, which is perfect because we're getting 14. Now, the other kinds of things you could do here is that while it's in here, Okay. While it's in the cold water and the pressure is uh, 14, I compress the little uh, uh, button here. Okay. I pressed it here and went back up to 14.7. So what happened here? Well, when I pressed it, I allowed air to either come in or go out, right? So in this case, what happened when I pressed it more air came in from the atmospheric pressure, more air came in, the atmospheric pressure pushed in, more air came in, and to stabilize the two pressures, and so the outside pressure and the inside pressure are the same, okay? So now, the pressure is reading 14.7. Now when I take it out, what's gonna happen? There's more air here than can normally fit in that area. So the pressure is gonna go up, should go up a little bit to like, almost 15. When I put it in the boiling water, what's going to happen? Okay? Now it should go higher than what it used to be. Because before it was 18. You can see now it's going to go almost 19. 19.2. Because there's more air here. Now I could press it again. Okay? Now air came out. Okay, air came out. And now I can take it out. And so now there's less air molecules than usually are, there are. Then you can put it in the cold water and it goes below 14. It goes 13, 12, almost 11 or so. So you can see the, the pressure gauge is very good at studying the, at the behavior of what happens when I press it. The, the pressures equalize with atmospheric pressure, gas comes in or gas leaks out, and then you can put it in different mediums and study the change in uh, pressure. So you can see that this is a very good tool to study the ideal gas law and specifically the Guy-Lussac law.
Thank you.